In this video, I'll be doing example 2.4 from Griffith's chapter 2, which uses Gauss's law to find the electric field inside a cylinder of charge. So the charge density is not uniform in this case. It's given as proportional to the distance from the axis. This is S in cylindrical coordinates. Charge density rho is equal to Ks, where K is some constant. So we're going to find the electric field inside the cylinder, and we're going to do it by drawing a Gaussian surface that is a smaller cylinder inside the cylinder. Our Gaussian surface has length L, so first we'll find the total charge enclosed in this surface, and we'll call the radius of our Gaussian cylinder S. So we don't actually need to use the radius of the cylinder of charge anyway. So first we'll find the total charge enclosed by this Gaussian surface, and we'll do that by integrating the charge density over the volume of the cylinder, and that will be Ks integrated in cylindrical coordinates. So we'll be integrating phi from 0 to 2 pi, z from 0 to l, because that's the length of the cylinder, then s from 0 to s. If that's confusing, I'll call the radius S prime. So we can pull out the 2 pi, the k, integrating from 0 to L gives us L. And then we'll just be integrating S squared dS from 0 to S prime, which gives us 2 thirds pi k L S cubed. So that's the charge. S prime cubed, I'm sorry. So that's the charge inside the Gaussian cylinder. Now we have that surface integral of E dot dA will be equal to 1 over epsilon naught times that charge. But first we'll notice that by symmetry, the electric field everywhere must be radially outward. So we'll notice when we look at our Gaussian surface that that is parallel to the area vector of the curved surface and perpendicular to the area vector of the ends. So the dot product on the ends will be zero. There will be no electric flux through the ends of the cylinder. And on the sides, it will be parallel, which means that we can get rid of the dot product and say that it's equal to the magnitude of the electric field times the magnitude of the area vector. And then instead of being on a closed surface, it's just going to be on the curved surface, which I'm going to call for curve. We then also note that by symmetry, the electric field must be the same everywhere on that surface. So then we're just integrating over the surface itself. And the area of that curved surface must be 2 pi s prime l, because s prime is the radius and l is the length. So then that equals 2 thirds I k l s prime cubed, and we can solve for the electric field strength. If we cancel the pi, the l, and one of the s primes, and the two, oops, I forgot the epsilon naught over here. Okay, so our electric field strength will be k s prime squared over three epsilon naught in the radial direction.